I hope our visitors coming from outside Pakistan have seen and learned a few things about Pakistan, which probably uh, the international media uh, may not have presented the way we have tried to do it here. I hope you all enjoyed it. Mr. Mohammed Abdul Alim is a fellow member of the of both the Institute of Chartered Accountants and the Institute of Cost and Management Accountants. He has had a rich 30-year career with two leading multinationals, Exxon Corporation and British Tobacco. He was the CEO of British American Tobacco for 10 years in Indochina and Indian Ocean. Thereafter, he worked for five years with leading government and owned corporations. His last assignment was as CEO of Pakistan State Oil which he left and after a brief gap, he joined C as CEO and Secretary General of the Overseas Investors Chamber of Commerce and Industry, OICCI. OICCI is the umbrella organization for all multinationals in Pakistan. And considering the topic of our discussion today, we have invited Mr. Alim to briefly share his views on destination Pakistan, from a foreign investor's perspective. Alim Saab, I request you all to please welcome Mr. Abdul Alim. Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guest. Uh, uh, before I begin, <coughs> let me uh, tell you that I didn't expect that there will be so many senior people uh, uh, like, uh, you know, the Secretary of Finance, uh, ex-Secretary of Finance, Secretary, um, uh, Secretary of Petroleum, and many other uh, fellows, um, uh, senior professionals. So my presentation, uh, as, as uh, Malik Saab said, is, was, is primarily focused on uh, foreign investors, uh, uh, the prospective foreign investors. So therefore, uh, some of you uh, senior colleagues of mine and uh, professionals, if you find uh, that I'm giving data which is, is not uh, necessary. I think it is not for you, it is for uh, the, uh, our visitors. But in any case, I won't uh, try to bore you. Uh, before I uh, go on to the uh, real, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, destination Pakistan, my presentation is in two parts. One is um, as to what is the scenario today, and, and, and then I will lead you as to why we are, we are uh, optimistic about uh, destination Pakistan, make, meaning uh, for from the foreign investors' perspective. Uh, starting with, uh, uh, let me take this opportunity to uh, um, uh, give you a brief profile of uh, Overseas Investor Chamber of Commerce. This is the oldest and the uh, largest chamber of commerce in Pakistan. Uh, it is uh, uh, only the membership is restricted to about 200 foreign investors, although in Pakistan there are about uh, five to 600 foreign investors of various size, but uh, our membership is restricted to multinationals. Uh, and it, so, so as of now, we only have 190 members. Why are we uh, famous? We are famous because our members uh, represent some of the top multinationals, 50 uh, Fortune 500 companies are our members. Uh, uh, about the same number are, or slightly more are listed on the stock exchange here. Uh, our, re our reason for fame is also that is this group of 190 companies uh, for the bill of uh, uh, revenue, revenue, submits the revenue of about uh, one third of the total country. I mean, uh, between 30 to 35 percent of the tax collection in this country comes from our membership. And on top of this, our members, uh, because they have been operating in Pakistan, they know uh, the uh, what are the goods and uh, not so good things in uh, of doing business in Pakistan. So they have been reinvesting uh, quite heavily. And 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 for example, last year on alone, they have invested 2.7 billion dollars, and this has been the trend. So uh, what it tells you is that uh, there are two type of foreign investors in Pakistan. One who are already invested here, they uh, they they appreciate the opportunity that is there, and that's why they are expanding. And there are those those who are uh, potential foreign investors and they are still trying to make out uh, whether uh, what is the right time to, to, to uh, jump into, uh, in, into Pakistan. 
Our members uh, have uh, an asset base of roughly $90 billion. Uh, in, uh, apart from these strong numbers, the other contribution of uh, uh, OICCA members, multinationals which are here, is the soft, soft values that we have created, the transfer of technology that has taken place. You uh, look at the top leadership of many organizations in Pakistan, whether multinationals or local, invariably you will find people who are coming from some of these multinationals. Uh, in, in terms of uh, economic uh, profile uh, for people um, uh, in Pakistan, it's, it's not uh, something very new, they, and even the foreigners can read all this. However, the reason that I brought this was uh, to some extent covered in the movie that we saw is that the opportunity that we, 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 talk, we are talking about. We, uh, a country of 208 uh, million people, the a real opportunity is in the middle class. We, you know, different economists are giving different numbers, but it, if it is the lowest number is 50 million, the highest number is 80 million. Even if it is 50 million, it is you take the population of Australia and Malaysia, for example, together, it is it is still bigger than this. And and that is where I will build up my story uh, going forward. And if it is 80 million, it is as big as the uh, the whole population of Turkey, for example. Similarly, the other uh, thing that we have to mention is that the GDP of this country uh, on a historical basis is uh, about 300 million. We all recognize that uh, not everybody, uh, the economy is not documented, so uh, uh, estimates vary. So, so even if you take a rough estimate of 50% economy is not documented, so the opportunity, again, uh, if it is documented, is tremendous. And, 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 and from that angle, uh, again, destination Pakistan means a lot more positive uh, com when, when I uh, will go forward on this. Uh, in terms of investment landscape, uh, Pakistan offers some of the best fiscal incentives. Uh, it's a different question when we will ask that uh, what, uh, what is the reason that Pakistan is not able to attract uh, uh, large investments. Uh, I'll, I'll cover those also. Uh, in terms of you know, foreign uh, ownership of 100% foreign ownership is allowed, uh, no restriction on remittance, no restriction on hiring of professionals, uh, expats in Pakistan. Uh, the uh, Pakistan has has a double tax uh, treaty with uh, over 64 countries, which, which is again very positive. The new factor is the seven special economic zones, which are at various stages of development. This is play and plug type of opportunity that is being created for uh, the foreign uh, investors uh, and, and local investors as well. Uh, CPEC, the video has already talked about, this is uh, quite uh, ambitious, 62 billion uh, worth of uh, uh, CPEC projects. They are at various stages of uh, implementation. Some of it has already started giving dividends, but this is where both the existing foreign investors and the potential foreign investors are very keen uh, in terms of uh, the, the how to uh, leverage this, uh, this in, in going forward. In terms of infrastructure, again, uh, Pakistan has some of the best uh, infrastructure in certain areas. For example, in the gas distribution, Pakistan is one of the best, uh, more, uh, very well organized uh, uh, structure we have. Uh, in terms of uh, Human resource, uh, uh, we have good quality people, uh, but I think going forward, the sort of growth that we are anticipating, we will be short. So we need to focus on this area. Uh, uh, but at this stage, uh, this is an asset for us. And natural resources, the video has already talked about. The uh, OICCI conducts various surveys, and, and, and I think these are the two surveys that I want to share with you. This is the business confidence uh, index that we carry out every six months. This is basically we talk to all over Pakistan, pe business people all over Pakistan, covers about 80% of the GDP of this country, and uh, this is done on a continuous basis. Uh, the, uh, there, the two lines that you see, blue line is all over Pakistan. So this is uh, manufacturing services uh, uh, or traders all over Pakistan uh, giving a, a view of Pakistan. Uh, so business confidence has been positive, has been uh, uh, between 20s. But the red line is the foreign investors. Whoever foreign investor OICCI members who come into this uh, survey randomly, their view is very positive. So they, 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 they also go in line with what is happening uh, 
uh, with the rest of the crowd, but they, they don't see, they don't get uh, influenced with one or two factors as easily as the local uh, small businesses do. And this this is uh, a survey that we do with the uh, foreign investors only. Uh, this is uh, OICCI members. We do it every second year, and it's, it's, a, it's a fairly comprehensive survey. The chart that I'm showing here is basically uh, one of the questions that we ask, not the CEO of this uh, company here. We ask the, the uh, boss of the CEO uh, of the multinationals in Pakistan. So most of these uh, CEOs are either sitting in Singapore, Dubai, or elsewhere. And the question that we ask is that if you have to, uh, if you have to decide on about half a billion dollar or a billion dollar investment, and your choice is to these uh, 10 countries, where will you go based on what you know about uh, Pakistan and based on what you know about these countries. And, and, and as I mentioned here, the red is in line that you show here. Uh, see here is basically in favor of the countries that we are talking about. Uh, and uh, the green is in favor of Pakistan. You don't have to see the number. What you have to see is the trend. The trend is that despite what uh, uh, pessimism that is there, whatever uh, you know, um, negative talks that goes on, People, those who are sitting with a decision-making power, those who have to decide with X billion dollars or million dollars, they still feel uh, out of the 10 countries, uh, six uh, Pakistan is seen either as good or uh, better than uh, these countries, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, and even India. Of course, there is no comparison between Pakistan and UAE. It's a different set of, uh, I mean, it's a different country altogether. Thailand, Malaysia, and China. We we have given it because we want to give uh, see the overall perspective. So this this uh, is uh, this uh, survey we do uh, every uh, dis every uh, second year in December, and we make sure that in early January, uh, when the uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan is going to Davos, uh, he uh, is ready. Uh, he, he does have uh, this uh, this type of a feedback, so that when he has to stand up in front of the real investors, potential investors, and others. He, uh, he can talk uh, among, among all the other things with facts and figures coming independently out of those foreign investors who are already invested in this. So, so this is one of the uh, very important feedback that we get. Uh, the period between 2000 and uh, 2013 has been quite tough for Pakistan because of various internal and external factors, but war on terror, which uh, really uh, impacted our image uh, and also Im impacted our, uh, our environment. This, this was a serious blow. To, uh, to investment by both by local as well as foreign investors. Uh, so we have been monitoring uh, the this, uh, uh, we have been monitoring the security situation uh, in, uh, and the survey that we am showing you here is uh, from the foreign investors only. From foreign investors, uh, this is their feedback. Those companies who are operating in Pakistan, how do they see the security situation uh, in various uh, part of uh, uh, of the uh Country, 75% of our membership is based in uh, in Karachi, and and Karachi, if you see, 98% uh, satisfaction satisfaction is there in terms of improvement. This is very very positive. Similarly, rest of Sindh also better. Uh, Punjab is uh, not did not had as much an issue as uh, as Karachi did. So uh, obviously there is uh, uh, less of an improvement. However, the problem remains in uh, uh, Balochistan, and you know the reason reasons why it is, I mean, I think this is more, uh, um, I, I, m more international uh, issues are involved here than, than the simple uh, security issues. Uh, the point that we have mentioned here at the bottom is that most of the foreign uh, uh, companies now are holding their board meetings and, and their uh, management meetings in Pakistan. There was a time when all the meetings were taking place in Dubai and, and, and Singapore, uh, all, and, and a lot of visitors were not coming. So this is, is, is a very positive sign. But the unfortunate part is that this information is not communicated, is not going outside. It is, yes, it is known in the multinationals, but this is something that should have been shared and should be shared on a more uh, regular basis. 
This is my final chart uh, as far as the past is concerned, is that uh, 55 of our companies who are listed on the stock exchange, they do have to share their financial information. And, and we have been analyzing it from 2009 to 2017. You, mind you that we had a very tough time as far as uh, security is concerned until 2013, and the situation only started to improve in Karachi after 2013. Despite that, the overall uh, Profit before tax growth in dollar terms was over 10%. In, 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 in the, uh, this is the annualized growth. Now tell me in how many countries in this region uh, will you get a real dollar terms growth of uh, you know, double digit growth like what we have seen. So the message which, I have been, uh, which we have been uh, saying from the overseas chambers uh, flow uh, on a regular basis is that yes, we have problems, but at the same time those who who have been operating in Pakistan, they have had a fairly good rewarding uh, 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 business here in Pakistan. In, in terms of uh, investment, uh, I'm just listing some of the recent uh, uh, investment, large investment which has taken place. If you notice that most of these investment is in the consumer goods industries fast-moving consumer goods uh, industry. Why is it so? Is because I think the, uh, as the movie mentioned, and as I have also mentioned at the start, that the, the middle class in Pakistan is spending money. They have, they, are, they have money, they are spending money, and, and, and the opportunity for growth for these uh, FMCGs are, uh, are tremendous. And, and, and uh, you know, this list is not, uh, tot is not uh, complete. There is a lot of more local investment also in the automobile sector, in the cement sector, uh, but I have listed some of the major uh, transactions which have taken place uh, in, in, in the recent past. As far as the outlook for the future, uh, this was as to what has happened uh, as of now. Uh, Opportunities for growth, uh, very much we are banking on the, uh, our strategic location, on the uh, in investment, uh, the dividend coming out of the CPEC uh, in investments. We, we feel that uh, if and when we are able to uh, really get these projects going, we will have a lot more opportunities uh, because the basic demand is there. There is, I mean, sitting where I am sitting, we get a lot more interest. Uh, I mean, as I had mentioned earlier on also, that uh, OICCI <coughs> is the first point of call for most of the uh, potential foreign investors because those who have an interest they, when they want to screen, they do touch base with us. I mean, obviously, they do touch, uh, talk to their own uh, embassies as well. So, so we, we have a fairly good feel as to what is happening. So there is a lot more interest for two reasons. One is that uh, uh, the potential foreign investors, they uh, do not want to miss the opportunity in a market of, of the size uh, that I've talked about, that middle class, 80 million going forward, per capita income, uh, 5,000 plus dollars in terms of purchasing power parity and, and growing. Uh, and and uh, then the opportunity with the CPEC, uh, uh, China-Pakistan economic, uh, economic corridor projects coming up. And mind you that in these past five, or, uh, in the past 10 years, we have not done as well as our potential is. And, and we have only started to de deliver, for example, 5.8 percent growth last year, and we hope that we will be able to maintain, uh, if not 5.8, 5 percent or plus. So, so they, the foreign investors is seeing all these opportunities, and they are basically trying to evaluate uh, as to what is the right time to get into, uh, into a market like Pakistan. So we are on the radar of most of these uh, multinationals. Uh, however, the uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, basically, uh, uh, as I said, the, uh, we are on the, the radar of consumer goods type uh, companies, on the radar of, for example, automobile companies. But are we on the radar of uh, some of these uh, uh, digital companies, big names? Uh, that is something we have not seen. You know, some of those uh, uh, Amazon of this world, some of the Googles of this world, they have an office here, they have. But the sort of research that uh, the real investment that we are talking 
the board in the new industry. But anyway, hopefully, uh, uh, time will tell us that you know that that will also uh, take place. Our uh, demographics, I have already mentioned, uh, that is a big uh, plus for us. The special economic zones, this is being very closely watched by the existing and potential foreign investors because uh, uh, is the government going to deliver as they have promised uh, uh, in, in the law? And, and we, we have no reason to believe that it will not, uh, but uh, these uh, seven economic zones are at various stages of development. Once we have this uh, up and running, we expect that that will be a very positive boost. Uh, the other factor which is very positive for Pakistan is that the uh, per capita income of Pakistanis are going up. Uh, I mean, on a historical basis, is somewhere around $1,600. But on a, uh, on a purchasing power parity basis, it is $5,500, which is uh, what these foreign investors uh, obviously uh, keep in their, in their uh, calculations. Um, law and order situation uh, is improving, uh, and, and uh, middle class is coming out. You may uh, be observing that uh, you know the shopping centers, the malls. Uh, I mean, we are building some of the largest malls in this region, um, in Lahore and Karachi, and, and those are being uh, populated. And, and, and so, therefore, uh, th this, uh, there is a strong visibility. Uh, and and tell you, I tell you that you know um, our foreign uh, investors, they have a fairly good connection here. They may not be here, some of those who are not here, but they do keep uh, a tag on as to what is happening, what, when is the opportunity coming. I mean, these are the MNCs who are operating in Pakistan, and uh, the yellow is the, uh, is the uh, growth um, in revenue. In, in the last 10 years in Pakistan, and in and, and green is the growth in their parent worldwide uh, headquarters. So you can see that you know Pakistan uh, has delivered on a sustained basis a fairly strong uh, growth in revenue. And, 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 and I think with those, again, I come back that, you know, it, it, there are two types of Pakistan, for, as far as the foreign investors are concerned. Those who are already invested, they are really taking opportunities. They are not doing, uh, they are not expanding uh, by announcing big, big projects. They are quietly building up factories. I mean, uh, Nestle builds up a small factory every, every other year. Procter & Gamble very quietly does it, but it doesn't go out for very reasons doesn't go out and uh, publicize it. Similarly, Unilever has just announced a $120 million expansion. Uh, you know the two-wheeler companies, you know, the, how the two-wheelers, uh, uh, you know, Atlas Honda and all those, how they are expanding. So there is investment taking place. Those companies who, who know Pakistan, they are really investing. And, 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 and those who are not, obviously, we have to convert them into, into Pakistan. Okay, the, uh, the, then the, uh, uh, we, we are the f world's fastest growing uh, uh, retail market. Right now, uh, Bloomberg has uh, valued us that our retail market in Pakistan is $152 billion. Uh, that you may uh, find, some of you may find it, it is too big, but I think two plus two minus one has made it 150 plus uh, billion dollars. And we, is uh, it challenge? Uh, we estimate this, that this will be challenging. Uh, this, this is the, I mean, Pakistan's, uh, in the next uh, five years, Pakistan's retail uh, environment is going to grow by um, uh, on an average of 8% uh, versus uh, the rest of the countries that we have mentioned. Uh, right now, as I said, we, our retail market is uh, estimated 152 million. In the next five years, by 2025, not five years, in, by 2025, uh, Bloomberg estimates that it will be somewhere in the region of $300 billion. So obviously, these $300 billion uh, has to be sourced, has to be supplied, has to be, you know, the product has to be uh, produced here in Pakistan. And, and, and therefore, there is a lot more opportunities. And this is what the uh, potential foreign investors uh, see. 
Oh, please, yeah. Ji. Uh, uh, last one is that uh, Pakistan is likely to make it to top uh, 20 countries by, uh, in, in terms of GDP uh, by 2030. Uh, as I said, uh, we may be uh, already there in, in between somewhere because our GDP, uh, Dr. Sab is here, Dr. Masood Sab is here, but our GDP is, is highly understated uh, as far as because documentation is a big issue. Uh, but uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, the way we are growing, we, we, the, the, um, all these international agencies are saying that we should be in the top 20s by 2030. Uh, in, in, in terms of uh, uh, opportunities, again, we uh, area where, where we uh, expect that there will be growth coming is technology and digitization. Uh, uh, we have not uh, implemented e-government in Pakistan. We have not uh, utilized this. There is a lot of opportunity uh, in, in this area. And, and uh, foreign investors uh, obviously are uh, very, uh, very much uh, looking into this area as well. Uh, agriculture productivity is very low in Pakistan. Um, uh, we, we uh, in the video you saw that we are uh, the largest producer, uh, fourth largest producer of many products, but our uh, productivity is, is uh, by international standard very low. And with the problem of water um, um, and, and other problems which are coming up, we need to, uh, we have no choice but to increase our productivity in agriculture. And therefore, that is an area, uh, by the way, you know, in 2009, uh, government of Pakistan had uh, commissioned uh, McKenzie to suggest uh, to invest to to develop a report for Pakistan and and suggest as to how to divert uh, or or, or uh, how how to manage our exports uh, in a manner uh, uh, different from than what it is right now. How to, to diversify, and you know in uh, and I have seen their report. In in their report, they have suggested three areas. One of the major areas that they have suggested is uh, agriculture. They have said that you know you have tremendous potential. We are right now selling our uh, product in raw form and not in value-added form. And this is one area that they have suggested. The other area, by the way, they have suggested is uh, pharmaceuticals. Is they are saying that you know Pakistan has the potential to be the regional supplier for Africa and many other countries. Uh, if we, but anyway, it's, it's a big report. It's for the government people and Ministry of Commerce to uh, dig into deep into it. Uh, FD, we have to uh, regularly look into our FDI strategy, uh, how to uh, attract. I think we have to move away from these oil companies and, and consumer goods companies only. I think we have to align our uh, FDI strategy in a manner that we are able to attract some of the research-based organizations like the, as I said, Amazon and, 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 and Googles and others, or whoever are, because uh, that is an area where uh, the growth will Come, and that is an area where employment opportunities for our youth will come because the other issue that we have to manage is to provide employment to our large uh, uh, and growing um, uh, group of youngsters. Pakistan uh, has not done very well in, in terms of IT exports. Uh, 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 we have just touched a billion dollar uh, IT exports. I mean, I think India has been over 100 billion for many years. Um, I've mentioned about a country like Philippines, which is uh, half the size in terms of population uh, and has five times more uh, IT, um, IT uh, trained personnel than we do. Then their export is already 24, 25 billion dollars, and our export is only a billion dollar. Why is it so? I think we, uh, one of the reasons is apart from, uh, uh, from lack of technology resources is is our pers is our image is our image people want to come to pakistan do want to give business but they do not feel safe enough they do not feel i mean it is the mindset that and and that is where we have to change we have to help them out because uh, it's not i mean they appreciate whatever uh, limited resources we have they do appreciate the quality but they still don't feel uh, confident enough and if they can't visit pakistan for some reason if there is advisory from us government or whatever it is it is uh, I mean, uh, that's another thing that we are working at OICCI regularly with these embassies that we are saying that, you know, your uh, advisories are not in line with the reality on the ground. But
but you know, it's, it's a very complicated system. But those are some of the factors. But we have to be mindful that this is an area where we should be, inshallah, getting a lot more, but we need to focus on this. We, we have to attract, as I mentioned, global, uh, big, big global names. Uh, I think uh, we, we have to establish our brand also. I mean, why do you buy Italian shoes and Italian clothes? Will you buy the Pakistani shoes and Pakistani clothes? No, uh, designer shoes. So, so those are the things that we have to talk about. We have to work on this. Um, we uh, are right now working with the government and we are su suggesting to them, which is uh, nothing new, is that we are saying that they should come out with a special incentives for export-based industries. Pakistan has a lot more potential. I, I cannot name the company, but there have been some inquiries in the past that they wanted to supply Middle East from Karachi, for example. They wanted to establish. But then again, uh, it is the approval process, it is the uh, port facilities, it is the supply chain issues, those did not materialize. But I'm sure going forward, uh, our systems will also improve, and those type of opportunities will be uh, availed. And uh, we uh, also are uh, now suggesting that instead of going for big names only, we also have to attract SMEs uh, in terms of foreign investors. You know, if you know, uh, for example, Switzerland, 90% of Switzerland's exports uh, are from SMEs. You know, so, and so why can't we attract those investments? India, for example, we know that India uh, is now receiving more investment from uh, small, small companies, uh, for foreign companies, than the bigger companies. Yes, of course, uh, Vodafone is also there and all those, but they get into various trouble. But the real investment is coming from $25 million and $30 million from SMEs, uh, which, who feel confident to come into Pakistan. So. If all uh, these opportunities are there and, uh, and, and, and uh, whatever uh, we have, uh, potential we have, why have we not developed? Why have we not been able to attract? The biggest issue comes about our perception, negative perception, which is, you know it, I know it, that it is, uh, we, uh, it is quite, uh, you know, uh, worse than the reality. Yes, we have problems, we have issues, but uh, those issues, to a large extent, we have managed. I mean, no country is perfect. I have lived in Sing uh, Singapore. I've also lived in South Africa. Uh, I've also lived in uh, uh, Mauritius. The, South Africa has more problems. Uh, Johannesburg has more problems than we have in Karachi. But that doesn't get the international press. We get the international press. We are, and and um, so, I sorry to say, standing in, in front of uh, um, this gathering, I would like to say that we also don't make an effort. I don't think we, we, are, we, we, we care about this, that what is the perception? How many times our finance minister has appeared in the BBC, uh, uh, for example, uh, this uh, hard talk and other program? You, you open up um, uh, BBC and you see one of the African uh, finance minister or minister will be there. So we have also not made an effort. We feel very, uh, and we have to go out, make sure uh, it is not by advertising that you will get this image. You have to consistently work. You have to deliver. How many times the bureaucrats in, in this government do worry about uh, when, when they make a decision and, 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 and they know that this decision is going to uh, backfire, they, then uh, they don't realize. And they do reverse. I mean, it's the famous case of uh, tax, which about two years back, Mr. Sagdar had levied on, uh, on the retail trade, that you know, if you have uh, paid sales tax in, uh, to the Sindh government and Punjab government, you cannot adjust it against the sales tax in, in, in uh, FBR level because they, he, uh, FBR was having an issue with the uh, SRB and others. The question is, that was totally illogical. It, uh, all the governments stood up, all the foreign companies stood up, and within 30 days he had to take it back. But he didn't realize, uh, and I'm not saying about him, Mr. Dhar, I'm talking about government of Pakistan. They didn't realize that how seriously they have damaged the confidence of, this, uh, of, of the foreign investors. Foreign investors are looking for transparent, consistent, and predictable policies. You want to take 40% tax, take 40% tax, but don't change a, your, your rules of the game every year. Super tax you impose today, and then you say it is for one year, and then you carry, no, uh, carry, it out, um, carry on for five years. Those are the sort of, sort of things that you have to really worry about. So. Uh, we, uh, the other people that can be very valuable is our electronic media. 
the breaking news concept, you know, that how many times have we, uh, our media has taken this economic issues on a serious basis? How many times we have given opportunities to hear uh, as to what is happening? Why is that Pakistan not getting investment? Why is that, uh, 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 you know, Vietnam is getting 6% of the GDP? By the way, um, uh, you know, the international norm is that uh, you should be getting around 3 to 6% of the GDP. Uh, FDI should be three to six percent. Uh, Pakistan has been less than one percent. I mean, uh, uh, Vietnam right now is running six percent. Uh, we have achieved three percent in 2006 and 2007 when we had this telecom investment coming. But right now we are not uh, there, and and we have the all the potential. Then uh, we, have, uh, uh, we think that uh, we need to come out with this early policy issue. We have to come out with 10-year long term because the foreign investors who invest, I'm talking of those who invest in facilities, they look for 20 years, 30 years investment. They don't, they're not coming to the stock market, so they need those assurance. Uh, ease of doing business, this is a very hot issue. Uh, Pakistan used to be 75 uh, until 2010. And, and in the seven years, we have deteriorated to 147 uh, against, uh, out of 189 countries. It is not that we have uh, made our systems uh, worse than what it was. What has happened is the rest of the world has moved faster than us, and they have improved. So, so the point is that uh, this should be, this is something which is manageable, this is something which should have improved, we are not doing it, and it is now hurting us, because the foreign investors, uh, so I'm talking in terms of destination Pakistan, what is uh, the opportunity, and how is it going to hurt us uh, going forward. So uh, right, now, uh, right now we see that there is some effort, but uh, is that enough? We are not sure. Uh, in intellectual property rights, copyrights, trademarks, uh, these are uh, very valuable. And, and you know, uh, for example, uh, we have a very good law in Pakistan, 2012 law, but it has not been implemented the way it should be. And as a result, you know, Pakistan is not getting some of the latest uh, inventions. I mean, particularly in the pharmaceutical sectors. New products are not coming into Pakistan, are not being produced, because there is a question mark on our ability to keep those protected. Uh, Cost of doing business, uh, basically we have to be aligned to the uh, rest of the world. It is, I'm primarily talking about the uh, uh, energy cost, for example. This is way out of um, um, uh, average. And, and all the others also, we have to make sure that we, uh, we remain competitive. And, and, and uh, lately there has been a trend of over-regulation in Pakistan. You know, we have been, uh, the, both the uh, provincial governments and the federal government are slowly and gradually coming out with new regulations. They don't, they try, they bring new regulations, but then they forget to delete the old regulations. And as a result, you know, the job of the accountants and the lawyers is becoming very interesting. And, but the uh, multinationals and the businesses, they are getting into some sort of a problem is that, you know, we are good in producing a product, but we are, we are not good in managing those uh, laws and you know those regulations. So we have to be very careful. We have to watch this out. We, uh, from the OICCI forum, we are taking this up very seriously because we have to make life uh, simple uh, for our businesses. So finally, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've given you both the positives and, and, and the challenges that are there. Uh, going forward, there is no way that Pakistan is going to stop. All we are going, uh, we are doubtful, is that will this growth be 7%, 8%, or will it be 4% and 5%? And uh, with the Pakistan that we are seeing, the destination that we are foreseeing, we have no reason that we should not be 7% uh, going forward if we, if we play smart uh, our, our positions. And speed uh, of growth and progress is uh, manageable. Uh, we need good governance, uh, and, and there is no reason reason that we should not succeed. And I think uh, both the Institute of Chartered Accountants and Institute of Cost and Management Accountants have a great role to play in this. Thank you very much.